Do you ever find yourself getting stuck in the creative process? Do you think perhaps it's because creative people have too many ideas? Let's head over to the art table and have a chat about that because I've now got three tips that I'd like to share with you in case you find yourself in that situation. There are so many places to get stuck in the creative process, aren't there? Today, I wanted to talk about how easy it is to get stuck at the very beginning. Yes, in the idea phase. Because I have to ask, can creative people have too many ideas? We talk a lot about procrastination. In my experience, procrastination is at its height at the very early stages of the creative process. Stephen Pressfield so ably explains this as resistance. We have fears and doubts that stop us in our tracks. Obviously, one of the first questions that comes to mind is, are we good enough? We question our skills and abilities. But I think one of the things that derails us is actually a particular strength of creative people. We are the idea generators. We live in a world of infinite imaginative possibilities. So often you hear writers and artists say that they're waiting for inspiration, that they have no ideas. Actually, I don't think that's the essence of the problem at all. I think we have too many ideas. As a creative soul, you know exactly what I'm talking about. In the corners of your mind are all sorts of potential projects. Ideas of novels and stories and paintings and personal projects, songs to write and perhaps new business ideas. It's such a precious stage of the creative process. These fragile idea seeds are perfect potential. Each of them could be wondrous. Better then to leave them in their embryonic form, perhaps. Safe, unrealised potential rather than a failed project. And so comes the inertia that plagues the frustrated creative. So many ideas, and yet not so much time actually making stuff. Intention is there, ideas are there, but somehow we're stuck. To begin creating is to actually choose one idea over the others. To declare one idea worthy of our time and to have the faith to trust it'll turn out as well as your creative heart sees it in your imagination. So what's a creative to do? Well, here are three tips to get you unstuck in the creative process. First of all, just choose. Something, anything. The first step to becoming unstuck is to decide. The origin of the word decide is to cut off, to eliminate other options. Impossible, I hear you say. However will I choose? When we kill off these other ideas, remember that it's not as final as it sounds. Today, those other projects are being given a no. But it's not a never, it's just a not now. So keep a not now list. Then those precious ideas are safe in their cocoons until their time comes. You probably won't believe me, but it doesn't really matter which one you choose. Each of those ideas is going to niggle at you until you actually put them in motion. It's the only way you will ever see how they're going to turn out. Statistically, of course, some will be better than others. I think of them like berries and seeds. Nature knows that not every seed will turn into a mighty tree. So seeds are produced in abundance to increase the chances of one succeeding, just like ideas. The only way we ever know which one will grow into the biggest and best tree is to plant it and let it grow. Until you bravely choose one, all of those ideas are held hostage in that place of possibility. And then when we hit a stumbling block on our chosen project, it's easy to return to that list and consider revisiting your decision. But the best advice I've ever heard on this topic was this. Your best project is the one you're currently working on. It's got value since it's already in motion. Your investment has begun. Don't you owe it to yourself to see it through, at least until you have got what you needed out of it. Now, tip number two is to remember that there are other gifts in the creative process. As precious as the idea stage is, it's only a small part of the whole creative process. While it's understandable to feel reluctance or resistance to beginning the work, staying stuck in this phase deprives the creative heart of the remaining gifts of the, of the creative process. 
Creative people like to make things. We're happy when we're in flow, in the midst of the actual creating. It's the joy of the process. The wonder of colour and tactile delights of playing with art supplies, or the rewarding cadence of the words that come flying out of the writer's typing fingers. This is what we're seeking. When we want so badly for our glorious ideas to be as amazing as they can be, we become so focused on the outcome. But really, it's not about that. It's about the process. Being present in the act of creating, meeting the need for self-expression, feeling the satisfaction of a completed project. Not producing a perfect product, but simply finishing something you started. Now, what about tip number three? Keep it small and manageable. Having chosen something to work on, the next step to getting unstuck is to keep it small, either by breaking your big idea project down to just the next small step, or by quite literally choosing a small project. I had to take my own advice here, as I found myself drowning in possible ideas of what to do next. And yes, there was a lot of Netflix binging involved until I remembered that the important thing is to get in motion. A body in motion stays in motion. And so I remembered my mini sketchbook. A tiny page in this book that you're watching me draw in right now takes me less than 30 minutes, including all the inevitable preliminary fussing about finding supplies and so on. But in that 30 minutes, I have the joy of creating, and I remember that this is the whole point after all. Whether I like what I produce in that time or not, there is the satisfaction of having a finished sketchbook page. This is not to be underestimated. What it's doing is giving your creative soul a chance to build up trust in your ability to follow through on an idea. It is self-care in a way, as a creative heart seeks self-expression, and it's an act of kindness to yourself to facilitate that. If all you can manage is a five-minute doodle in the corner of your planner every day, do that. Give yourself a chance to remember the delight of making something. Demonstrate to yourself that you can be trusted to keep showing up. So forget about the relative worth of each of your possible ideas and projects. Don't concern yourself with the quality of the finished product. Just make something. While I finish off adding some little details to my tiny fairy with coloured pencils, I just wanted to thank you for watching the video and if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing so that you don't miss the next one. And if you've enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up because that really does help my channel. And if you're wondering uh, how I'm going about drawing these little fairies, I've got a mini sketchbook playlist and you can see me painting the little girls that came in the pages before and in those videos I talk a little bit more about my process of actually drawing them and how to go about drawing little people. I've popped a link in the top right hand corner of this video uh, to show you how to find those nice and easily because they really are so much fun to draw and as I said they don't take very long at all so there's, they are a no excuse kind of project. It's rather fun dressing them all up um, in different ways so I never quite know how she's going to turn out because I'm kind of making it up as I go along. But it does leave me with one last question for you. Do fairies wear jeans? I hope so, because this one is. Maybe it's okay as long as they're flares. What do you reckon? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks again for watching. Have a lovely creative day.